one of the places that I've always felt at home. So we have believed in God and what was revealed to us and what was revealed to Abraham, Ismael, Isaac, Jacob, and the descendants. And what was given to Moses, Jesus, and the prophets from their word. We make no distinction between one another and we are Muslims. Quran 84 Al Imran. My name is, uh, is Hassan Reza Shinovar. That's my Islamic name. But my American name is, um, is Lauren Anthony Shinovar. I was um, born in Daegu City, South Korea. I was adopted by an American family uh, in um, Gross Eel, Michigan. It's a Detroit suburb. I was um, raised as a Catholic, which um, throughout my whole life, I did not really see eye to eye with uh, Christianity at one time. I only uh, was practicing Christianity because uh, my parents were Christians. My grandparents were Christians, so I was only following because of my, my family roots. Um, I went to a Christian camp um, from the ages of 10 to uh, 17, which um, things uh, that were being taught were going in one ear and out the other. Um, it's like a lot of the things that they're uh, talking about, I didn't really get it. Um, I uh, came across um, Islam when um, I was in high school. I uh, started touring uh, the masjid uh, in Dearborn. I was, uh, was part of a tour group with uh, my mother. Uh, she uh, was with a group uh, which they agreed to uh, showing people the, the masjid, uh, showing uh, non-Muslims uh, the masjid. I actually um, was intrigued by the uh, whole atmosphere of the masjid, in which there was a lot of uh, a lot of prayer, a lot of um, community activity. I became curious about uh, Muslims um, on their way of life and um, and everything they do, and I came to know that they're not really exactly like the people that we hear about on the news. So. I've made Muslim friends in, in high school. I got to know them, but they were of the Ahl Sunnah school of thought. I came to know a little bit about Islam um, through them. Like one of the basic points is, uh, is hygiene, which um, a lot of people who are saying bad things about um, Middle Easterns, uh, Middle Easterners, uh, that they're dirty, they're not clean, uh, they're rude, they're selfish. Um, I, I came to know them. Uh, they're not really bad people at all. They're very clean, very humble. Um, after I had the tour of the of the masjid, I I didn't uh, embrace Islam uh, at the time, but I accepted it as a legit path to God. It wasn't really until um, I started college I started making Muslim friends. Um, this one. One, actually, two, three friends. Uh, they're all uh, all Shia. Some who are uh, strictly practicing, and there are some who are not. Uh, some who are actually trying to become religious after being indulged with a Western lifestyle. There was actually times that I was um, trying to become uh, religious again, like uh, through Christianity, which is what I was raised in. I was uh, trying to debate with them on Christianity, how it's legit, how people should uh, start believing in Jesus. Um, I was debating that with uh, my Muslim friends, but I kept losing the debates and they were asking me, uh, so uh, why can't you just look into Islam? It's really more legit than uh, what you're following right now. And um, I said, no, you just have to believe. That means you're not a believer. And But still, they're telling me the, that my verdict is not logical. I started to become more interested in uh, Islam when I first left for college at the age of 20. I have uh, 
made a Muslim friend. Like, there was times when I was actually trying to convert him to Christianity at one time. But what really was proving uh, Islam has a lot of valid points is that I was always losing the debates. I kept losing. Like, I, I was telling my friend, like, no, you have to believe in Jesus. And uh, he's saying, sorry, Jesus was not the son. And I was like, what? But it says in the Bible there, that he is. Why am I always losing? If this is the truth, why am I always losing? I should be winning. But I lost, and then he actually did prove it, that uh, Islam is the truth, and that Jesus was only a prophet. It doesn't really prove a valid point, and I was being asked, like, how can Jesus be, be God? Jesus, peace be upon him, can't be God. Jesus was only a prophet. He can't be God. So there's actually a lot of valid points in the Islam that proves that Jesus uh, was not God. I started to watch videos um, starting when I was like um, 21 to the age of uh, 23. When I was around uh, 21, I actually started uh, to actually believe that and, um, my f Muslim friends made valid points about uh, Jesus alayhis salam, that he was not the son. And it's like um, they're pointing out that and, um, how I believed at one point that Jesus was, uh, was the son of God, that it's kind of like basically believing that uh, God had genitals and uh, God was the father. And growing up as a Catholic, I knew that there were things that were not really adding up on how the, the clergy cannot marry. It just doesn't add up in the controversy that was going on within the Catholic Church, which has been going on since the time of Martin Luther in the Roman Empire. Um, it's been going on for years, like the child molestation, for years it, it's been happening. I just got turned away from the Catholic Church. I just stopped going to church. I stopped uh, doing that. I've, I remember I was doing a lot of immoral things at one time, like um, one of them was going to pubs and uh, drinking alcohol. I, I thought I liked it at one time, but uh, I, I really didn't. If you, if you look back on it, like from my perspective, it, it's, it's not um, something that leaves you with a good feeling in the morning. I, I never uh, really, uh, felt comfortable, comfortable with uh, leading a Western lifestyle at one time. Um, around the age of 22, I started watching videos of uh, people who have converted to Islam, uh, hearing what they had to say, and um, a lot of these uh, were proving um, the points that Islam is legit. So I started uh, visiting um, Masajid more often with uh, my Muslim friends. I it was always, alhamdulillah, um, and thank you for bringing me to the masjid um, for um, the, the prayers. Um, it really meant a lot to me at the time and till now. I met Brother Hassan within probably the last mm -hmm. year, beginning of the last year, and I found in him a very nice uh, Muslim, highly motivated, good morale. A trustworthy, honest, I can't describe, you know, he's a role model for a good Muslim. Alhamdulillah. I see him occasionally at the uh, Islamic Center of America on Ford Road in Dearborn, but mostly he's here every, almost every f a Friday for a prayer, and sometimes on Thursday, Dua Kumail. What was really happening through me, I was having a spiritual, uh, spiritual ailments. Uh, I, was, I was sick. I felt like I was, uh, I probably could have died at, at that point. And it felt like that there was uh, a lot of spiritual problems, uh, spiritual attacks. Um, I was having nightmares. Uh, it was a sense of paranoia. It was a sense of uh, Iblis uh, trying to get to me. Um, I was looking... Um, at more sites about Islam on the on the web. I did not really uh, have very much money on me. Um, it, was, it was actually a kind of a spiritual battle. Like I didn't know what to do. Like um, there there was actually one point I was refraining from from alcohol, which Alhamdulillah I gave it up. Um, 
cigarettes. I remember at the time I was, um, I was smoking a lot of cigarettes. So I looked at the uh, websites um, that I found through Google. I Googled the address for the nearest masjid, which at that time was uh, Ahlusuna, um, or um, which I later found out was uh, Wahhabi or Salafi or Salafin or how, how you put it. Um, I walked to the address, uh, which I've uh, wrote down on paper. I had GPS on my phone at the time, so I, I used that. I walked to the masjid. Um, it felt like um, I, I may have reached the end of my rope. Um, I went into the masjid and said to myself, okay, I don't have a choice anymore. I don't have a choice. It's either Islam or or die. So I chose Islam. I said my shahada and um, everything there. I, I felt so overcome from all the negativity that has been uh, building up within in my heart over the years. The members of the house in Basin Amla used to plan, used to plan in the minds of people the need of remain with the truth and say that they believe to be true regardless of the reaction it might provoke for Allah Azza wa Jal. The Quran says the truth is from your Lord so let him who please believe and let him who please disbelieve. They, um, they taught the believers that they ought to be just in all domains of life, whether in their nor normal life, or in their war, or in their political stance. They stress that man should always preserve the human being in, his, in, in him, regardless of the pressure he faces. Especially the, in the, the dedication in every time and place. Everything just got better. Of course, I was still in Oregon at the time. I was actually about to skip my flight back uh, to Michigan because um, I grew uh, up in Michigan. I was uh, only uh, supposed to be in Portland for about a month. I was about to skip the flight, uh, and, and as the brothers over there, they were actually encouraging me to skip the flight and um, not go back to Dearborn. Of course, there was, there was one time when, uh, before I converted, I was being discouraged about Islam because I was actually afraid of being ostracized from my family. I was afraid my mom was going to kick me out of the house. I was afraid I was going to lose so many friends. But I've actually gained new friends, which uh, I, don't, I don't really talk to them anymore. Um, my numbers changed and um, I lost their numbers. Um, I don't email them. Uh, they don't email me either. So I I'm actually uh, going to say it's probably best to, if uh, there was no contact between uh, me and them anymore because of the extremist um, ways of their thinking and their belief the system, uh, which almost would have um, uh, influenced uh, me to give up, but I, I didn't give up. Uh, they're actually discouraging me from ever coming back to Michigan, because, uh, uh, which I'm not far from Dearborn. Uh, it's uh, got a big uh, Shia community. Uh, they were telling me not to go there because uh, the Shia live there. I did not listen to them. So I just, uh, I just took my flight back to Michigan and um, started to get to know the, the Shia a little more better uh, than, I, than I did because I did not really know uh, about the two differences of the Sunni and the Shia. And I, I didn't know at the time. It's kind of like, um, I, I don't want to say that I was being a blind follower of, of, uh, of everything around me. I started to um, improve my knowledge um, ever since uh, the first time I, I took my Shahada. Started to become a little more knowledgeable about um, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, his uh, Ahlul Bayt Asalaamu Alaihim, uh, most importantly uh, Imam Al Hussein Alaihi Salam and how he sacrificed himself for the world and um, ever since um, the Battle of uh, Karbala. Imam Hussein on how he uh, made sacrifices um, 
for um, everything he ever knew, everything he ever loved. Um, to keep uh, Islam going was actually the biggest uh, sacrifice he ever made, was um, sacrificing uh, himself for the cause. All of them have, um, all the Alabayt, uh, Aslamu alayhim, have said a lot of useful things. Like, uh, like for me, like um, I used to have problems with uh, anger uh, in my youth, um, way before I converted uh, to Islam. I was always angry. I was always looking for truth. Uh, there were times um, I could have been something else, um, but um, I'm actually glad, alhamdulillah, that I'm a Muslim right now. More so importantly, uh, of the Shia school of thought. Um, I have made friends who were Hindu. I, there was times I may have looked into Buddhism or was almost considering that, like believing Christianity, but Hinduism and the Buddha, they don't really have the concept of, of one God. Uh, it's um, usually bound to idols. Um, Anything that is really most important to me, like I, I've I've made sacrifices. Imam Hussein al Islam made sacrifices, um, not just for his own personal life, but uh, for for mankind in general, everyone in the world. Like um, I, I'm making a lot of sacrifices for myself too. Like um, like giving up a, a lot of things from uh, an Americanized uh, lifestyle that I, I used to lead at one time, and uh, becoming more knowledgeable in Islam. Uh, that's that's really a, a sacrifice I'm making right now. There are times when. Um, I just had to give up on um, a lot of uh, myself to better myself, like uh, changing my diet and uh, changing like how much I do things. Like uh, giving up on a majority of television was actually a good start for me. Uh, one thing uh, that um, Imam Al Hussein Al Islam has taught me is to uh, never give up on my non-Muslim family, as uh, Imam Al Hussein Al Islam never gave up on his own. Like he even. Um, he was so knowledgeable. Um, he was even the, the attorney of his own family. So there, there's actually a lot to learn. There's actually some things that, um, well, inshallah, that I will, I'll learn more along the way. I rarely ever get angry anymore. Like, if you look at uh, Imam Musa, uh, he never got angry at all. He always uh, found ways to uh, uh, control it. You, you'll never uh, see anyone like uh, Imam Musa al-Islam never, never got angry. He never did. Even when he was being oppressed, uh, he never got angry. Uh, I'm studying uh, Arab Cultural Studies uh, at Henry Ford Community College. Uh, I wasn't really going to go to Henry Ford at first time because I dropped out of uh, a four-year university when I was younger. But now I'm uh, at Henry Ford uh, studying Arab Cultural Studies uh, to uh, finish up my degree and uh, possibly, inshallah, get a job. What, what I was really going to do before I even um, thought of enrolling back in school, I was uh, about to go off to the Hausa in uh, Tampa, Florida with uh, Sheikh Mohammed Beg. Uh, to study to be in uh, Adam. Then uh, I would have gone to uh, Negev. Then um, finishing off the, the studies in, uh, in Qom. My real dream is to um, possibly uh, give dawah to um, South Korean people as, uh, as I'm of Korean descent. Um, I feel that they would probably be, be somewhat more convinced of, because of uh, one, my, my race and learning the language. Um, I would have to learn the language because uh, my first language is English. I, I feel that I'm, I'm too good uh, in this world to work a, a regular job. I feel like I'm more called for uh, religious things um, more than ever than I, than I used to think. Like growing up in my youth, I was not uh, very much religious. Um, the only thing religious about me was uh, was coming from um, a Christian uh, background, um, Christian base camps and um, church on Sunday and um, Christmas. Um, that, that's the only thing um, that was ever religious when it came to me was, was that. I, I didn't really do anything um, as far as religion goes, but when I, when I converted to Islam, 
my uh, whole concept on um, on having a religion uh, changed for me. That uh, religion is actually very important um, for uh, everyone's lives. So there's always reasons to why I chose um, Islam was in a way to better myself and um, my conversion to Islam actually taught me to uh, respect people who are different than me. Um, my adopted family, uh, of course, they, they raised me Catholic. Um, both my parents are American. Um, my mother is from a Sicilian background. She speaks English only. Uh, my father uh, is from a French-Canadian background. Uh, they were uh, older when they adopted me. My father, um, may God rest his soul, has uh, passed away when I was 17. I was uh, still only in high school when I discovered that he has passed away. My brother, um, he's three years younger than me, uh, probably about uh, 24, I'm, I'm 27. Um, he does not really uh, follow a religion. Um, at all, but he might identify with more his um, his own faith, which is the Catholicism. But he doesn't really practice anything uh, really at all. Like um, there are times when he, he will um, have the occasional drink of alcohol. Um, I, I get saddened by that. Um, I don't really say much, but it, it's uh, it's disappointing to me that um, my mother. Um, there are times when she thought it was a phase uh, that I was going through at one time, like finding um, out my uh, myself at one time. Um, there are times when she thought I would I would leave Islam and return back to um, what I was originally raised in, but that didn't happen. So I made a vow to myself to stay as a Muslim forever. I was going through the motions at one time. Uh, I was uh, trying to find out like what was really true, what is really not, like what path do I have to follow. Do I follow this? Do I follow that? Do I follow um, whatever? Do I follow Hinduism? Do I follow Christianity? Do I follow Judaism? Or whatever. But um, but I'm actually glad that I um, had that chance to become Muslim. Alhamdulillah. There were times when I did, not, I did not really ask for this, but at the same time, I'm really glad it happened. I'm really glad this has happened, that I converted to Islam. She, uh, at times I do feel that she's not as supportive uh, but she's getting better and, and used to it. Otherwise, uh, she would have uh, kicked me out of the house. Um, I do have conversations uh, about Islam to her, um, usually once or twice a week or whenever I have a chance. So I'm out of the house uh, like 90% of the day, uh, working at the airport and um, taking my classes at the community college. I'll, I'll talk to her about Islam. She's, uh, she's gotten used to it, that I'm Muslim, like eating halal, and um, of course I would have to buy my own meat, and um, praying in the house and, and everything. Uh, growing up, um, I know that there's, uh, there's something in the, deep down inside, uh, I say she's not my mother, but she was uh, the one who raised me since um, early childhood till now. So. But that, that actually tells me that she is my mother, but biologically, um, no, because uh, she's, she's white and, um, and I'm um, East Asian. I, I still uh, give my mother love. Like, um, like there's something that the, the Islam has taught me is, um, is I should still maintain contact with my uh, family regardless, and my parents are my parents regardless if uh, they're biological to me or not, or if I was adopted or not. Um, they're, they're still my parents. Um, I still have to give them respect. and. Uh, I still have to maintain uh, excellent contact with them. But if I be became Christian from a Muslim background, it would be the reverse. I would have to sever contact from them altogether. But Islam teaches you to remain in contact with uh, your parents if you came from a non-Muslim background. That, that's something that, that is actually the duty of Allah. I, I can't uh, violate that. Uh, well. Um, there's actually uh, different ways, and um, there's actually a lot of things that um, could be required, like um, possibly a lot of research, and um, I would have to give them books and direct them to the nearest uh, Islamic center that uh, emphasizes Ahl al-Bayt, uh, Islam al um, There are times when um, I, I really had nothing, um, but I would have to use words uh, and be humble about it, um, about to influence uh, 
someone on the Ahlbayt. I never really uh, got that when I first uh, converted. I was uh, not really uh, totally aware of uh, the two different sects of uh, Islam. Uh, that's something I was not really educated about because um, people in, um, say, in the West, uh, they're not really aware about the two different sects. Like, they don't um, emphasize that there are schools of thought within Islam. I would tell them that um, we're a more tolerant uh, school of thought, and um, that we emphasize um, humbleness. Like the uh, alphabet uh, that can be a perfect example.